Hi, everyone. I'm Donna Yen, Cherry Bomb's event director. I want to welcome you all to Julia Jubilee, where we are celebrating the life and legacy of Julia Child. Today, we bring you Nancy and Paula, a special chat and baking demo. I'd like to thank Craig and Beryl for making today's event and Julia Jubilee possible. So starting her career as a pastry chef, working with influential chefs at restaurants like Spago by Wolfgang Puck, Michael's Restaurant in Los Angeles, Nancy Silverton has led to be one of the most influential chefs in food and drink in America. She's co-founded the world-renowned La Brea Bakery, as well as cherished LA institutions like Campanile. Nancy is the author of eight cookbooks, including her most recent book, Key Spaca. She owns many restaurants in Los Angeles, including Pizzeria Mozza, Osteria Mozza, Mozza To Go, and Key Spaca, and her brand new restaurant, The Bearish, in the historic Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel, and I believe it opens tomorrow. So she is a mentor to many and has famously made Julia Child weep after one bite of her brioche tart. So for those of you who haven't seen that video, please go to Cherry Bomb's Instagram. We actually posted that video and it's, it's amazing. Um, on the other coast, we have Paula Velez, who was born and raised in New York City and the Dominican Republic. She graduated from Le Cordon Bleu and has trained and worked as sous chef with master chocolatier Jacques Torres and then moved to DC to work with celebrated chef Christina Tosi at Milk Bar. Later, she co-founded and spearheaded Bakers Against Racism, a worldwide bake sale that raised over $1.9 million for organizations that support Black lives and Black communities. Paula is now the executive pastry chef at Compass Rose, Maidan, and La Bodega restaurants in DC. So what do these two women have in common? Both have made a tremendous mark in the food world with their undeniable talent, passion, and vision. Real trailblazers, very much like Julia Child. So I want to bring both Nancy and Paula to the center of the screen. And then Nancy, I think you are still on a mute. We're gonna still? Have... Oh, we're good now. Hi. Hello. And then we have Paula. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> that was um, an entrance. <laughs> <laughs> I am so excited for you two to meet. I mean, I think this is the first time you two meeting and, you know, what better way over Madeline's. Um, I'm just excited to see two, two amazing chefs together. And I don't know, just you guys walking through this recipe and talking about your experience. Um, and Paula, I think I'm going to let you take it from here. Yeah. Um, but um, I will come back at the very end with some questions for the audience. I'm sure a lot of you will. So please make sure to use the Q&A function below and have fun. And I'll talk to you guys soon. Yay. Thank you for having me. Chef Nancy, I'm such a big fan. I wish I could hug you. Hug, 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 hug. <laughs> well, I'm going to be in Washington in like two weeks. So I'm oh. going to look you up. And I've been yes. to Maiden before. Yes. Great Let us restaurant. Know. Yeah. Oh, oh, I will. That's going to be. I'm gonna try to uh, make the the Madeline's better. I I've been like <laughs> rushing around, and I think I really need to let my batter uh, sit for that 24 yes, hours key. to get that beautiful bump. You know, I guess like we could pump up the volume or bump up the volume. I don't know. Anyways, so I think today is just like one of those things where I am so for me like going to uh, culinary school. I only kind of had that inspiration after watching Julia and Julia, Julia and Julia, right? And um, I saw like the life of Julia Childs and I was blown away that someone could be so bold and proud to just be themselves on camera. And she's like, I, well, uh, Carrie asked me to do my uh, Julia Childs impersonation. <laughs> so I'm going to say, hello, everyone. And <laughs> but I wanted uh, to first introduce your recipe. You've been making this recipe, you know, like testing it out. And this is the first time anybody is ever going to see it. So I'm I feel really privileged to even have these ingredients right in front of me. Um, so I think I'm going to ask a few questions and then we can go straight into the demo. And hopefully I don't mess it up. But obviously they can just watch your screen. <laughs> well, as Julia would say, there's really no way of messing something up and everything, including a chicken that falls on the floor to a souffle that doesn't rise to a bechamel that might curdle. 
nothing is a mistake and everything is salvageable. And that's one of the reasons that for me, she is or has always been such a mentor um, because she clearly has fun in the kitchen. She has mm -hmm. fun cooking. She doesn't take herself seriously. And uh, I think a lot of people have a lot to learn and be inspired by watching her old videos to yeah. see what cooking really is about. I agree. I, I mean, like growing up, I just watched, you know, Jacques Lepin and Julia. And for me, like seeing you is like that direct bridge. Like you're one degree of separation from somebody who I will never, ever meet. And I met Chef Jacques and he actually loves chocolate covered Oreos. So <laughs> that's like, that's like my party trick. Like I'm like, and I know what Jacques Lepin likes to eat, but what was it like to work on these shows? How did you end up on Julia's show. Well, you know, the first show that I did with her was a um, a show that she was just starting, I think for the first time, separating herself from Jacques and doing her own show. And she wanted yeah. to do something called Master Chefs. Mm -hmm. And uh, she wanted to feature, uh, I don't remember how many, but let's say two dozen chefs from around the country, each that she felt were accomplished in, in, their, uh, in their genre. And so she chose me to be the bread baker. Um, for the good and the bad of it, I was sort of the guinea pig. I was the first show that they, uh, that she and she, her production team taped. Mm -hmm. And so I can't say that it was a pleasurable experience. You know, anything Is that TV you're the ever? first of. Yeah. Well, sometimes it's a Fun. And I had a lot more fun on her baking show years later. Yeah. They had to convince me that the baking show was a whole different format. What was hard about the first one was that I was alone on a screen mm. and she was off to the side giving me direction. What made right. it much more fun and enjoyable and I think successful is the baking show that I did where she invited all of the bakers into her kitchen and we got to cook side by side in that iconic kitchen that is now on display at the Smithsonian in Washington, DC. Um, but that was a whole different experience because it's a whole different vibe having that person next to you and having right. actually someone to talk to. Right, right. And I think that that's what makes like this like new um, kind of like technological advancement in like cooking demos so different because we I can look at you you can tell me hey don't yeah. add that you know and it makes it much more um I don't know like I feel like a like a blanket when you're when I see you I feel like a warm blanket is like you're gonna be able to bake this don't worry there, there's you a are. <laughs> couple of thousands of people watching this but there's no there's no issue you know no but yeah that, I, I agree it's, a, it's an interesting format because I've learned to just like focus on the screen and I feel like I'm talking about, you know, to you and I feel like you're just really on the other side of my work table. Exactly. We're in community. And but I wanted to go back and you mentioned that iconic kitchen, right? I, I remember watching even like just watching rewatching it on Cherry Bomb's uh, Instagram channel that taste the tart, the brioche. I Talk to me about that. How was that experience? Like half of you looked like you were mortified. Like you were like, why are you crying? Right? But well, you know, the reason why I was so mortified is that, um, well, just to back up a little bit. So Julia likes, even though the shows are taped and they're edited, she likes to film them like they're in real time. Mm. And so because of that, um, in that show, she gave me, you know, very direct instructions that, we would be filming and as soon as, let's suppose five minutes before uh, uh, we needed to wrap it up, she would hit me on the, hit me on the hip and that means mm -hmm. finish it up and at the same time give me a bite so I can taste it. So oh, wow. I'm busy sauteing the stone fruit in a very, very hot um, wine syrup and mm -hmm. I get that tap. It's like, oh no, okay, wrap it up. So. I, you know, bring out the brioche and I, you know, I need to plate it and spoon that hot, hot syrup uh, with fruit in it on top yeah. and then put the, 
um, Sabayon and nuts yeah, and whatever yeah. I did and then cut it and give her a bite. And I look at her, you know, cause I want to know like good, bad, what do you think? And like tears start coming down. And my instinct was, oh no, I just you thought burnt. You burned her. Yeah. Julia Childs, right? Yeah. Um, and so I was relieved to know that I didn't burn her and mm -hmm. it was an emotional experience. Oh, that's so beautiful. I mean, I can't even imagine how, I think, what does that kind of like translate into that experience now a lifetime of inspiring us to bake you you know brought a renaissance of artisanal bread back to california what how did that segue into that and how does this personally relate to you and your work experience congratulations on your, well, you, your restaurant by the way <laughs> <laughs> you know i think that it, it this tart the simple mm -hmm. brioche tart uh, mm -hmm. brought her to tears because that brioche tart conjured up all sorts of memories and I'm not sure what they were, but mm -hmm. it reaffirmed my belief and sort of my mission in food and cooking is that it's about the story. It's about the, it's about, it's about the story. It's about the memories. It's yeah. not about somebody's ego and trying to be impressed mm -hmm with something on a plate that just leaves you cold and flat that right. the most successful and the most delicious food is food that it's clear it's about a story right. it's about memories it's about sharing it's about whatever we want it to be but it's about emotion oh man i mean if that's not every chef that i meet that is making a difference in the industry has this core value they yeah. cannot absolutely cannot be ego driven because this is a community where all together every single person has a, a specific role in the restaurant and to see it as like a i did this myself kind of situation it's it's so it's so vain and pointless and that's not what baking is about we need each no. other you know everything i do at the restaurant everything i do uh in my cookbooks it's mm -hmm. all about the collaboration, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, if you don't want to collaborate, then you don't want to work for me. You know, if you don't <laughs> want to give some input, yeah. then maybe this isn't the right place. Yeah, yeah. And I think those who are watching this right now, I think the biggest takeaway from this is be a collaborator, want yep. to help your neighbor because this industry in the current state that we're in right now, we need the utmost help and we're only gonna get through it together. So I guess I'm done asking questions. Do you wanna <laughs> walk me through this beautiful recipe? I had, to be honest, I baked a few and they didn't get the, the bump, you know what I mean? They didn't get the little yeah. <laughs> So I mine is to the side, but right when we started, I was like eating them. I was like, this is so tasty and delicious. So wonderful. that's what I mean. You know, there's um, certainly there's um, there's technique that will get you to what should be the final mm -hmm. product, right? But as long as you put some love into it, and as long as you uh, use good ingredients, mm -hmm. the process is going to taste good no matter what. So maybe you didn't yeah. get that bump, but you know what? You'll get it next time, and I'm going to show you how to get the bump. You know when um, when uh, I don't know if it was Carrie or I don't know who it was that's that um, that sort of asked me to come up with that recipe that I could teach you that would mm -hmm. kind of uh, epitomize who Julia Childs was. And I thought mm -hmm. and I thought and I thought and I thought, you know, look, at she is, was was just a very, very humble person, full of life, loved life, loved France, but loved the ordinary and was never afraid to let you know that it was the ordinary that was done correctly is mm -hmm. what she was all about. You know, being in her kitchen, which was the simplest of kitchens. And I don't know how much of the kitchen you can see, but as I look around, I have a toaster that plugs in and I have a five quart KitchenAid mixer that plugs in. And that's the only fancy things that I have in my kitchen. And hers oh, was wow. uh, pretty much 
the same. You know, she didn't need, you know, tools and equipment. They don't make things that taste delicious. You know, it's these hands mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and this heart, you know, uh, that make things that are delicious. And so I thought, you know what, a Madeleine would be the perfect, simple little French pastry that we all love that's so often done so improperly, you know, mm -hmm. sold on um, sort of coffee bar counters in yeah. little plastic bags. And people think that as long as it's baked in this uh, kind of shell mold, that it's a Madeleine. And it's and that's not. that's simply not true. It's not nope. true. It's it's the booty. It's the booty that gives it the it's the booty. It's the booty. You know, and you know, and you got to remember also. There's a couple things. So let's talk about a few of the uh, practical things about a madeleine. Mm -hmm. That's important, and then we'll get right into the baking of it. One thing is you got to remember the size of a madeleine is so small. Mm -hmm. It's a cake. It's not a cookie. It's a cake, but it's not a cake that's going to sit around for weeks. That cake should be eaten slightly warm, but certainly on the same day, right? Mm -hmm. That's that's yeah. key. So uh, don't don't think this is something. And even though the recipe that I gave you probably makes about three dozen, um, and most people like you, it looks like, and me definitely have only one madeleine pan that makes making madeleines, uh, washing out the mold, letting it cool down, mm -hmm. and baking your second, and then your third, unless you want to have three madeleine pans. But or just keep the batter because it does better chilled. So would okay. you suggest that the, the folks at home um, wanting to bake this recipe, would you suggest them putting them, once they chilled their dough and they have leftover dough, could they store it in piping bags um, yeah, in their they fridge? They can store it in piping bags. Just have to bring it up to temperature. It has okay. an extraordinary amount of butter, which again is what all thing that's all what Julia was about was more and more butter when you could. And this recipe is, you packs in a lot of butter. It's going to be very firm. Uh, mm -hmm. A sh little shortcut that I didn't talk about in the recipe is if you make it and you're really in a hurry, what you could do is spoon about two tablespoons in the large Madeleine pan mm -hmm. and then stick that pan in the freezer or the refrigerator for about an hour and a half. Got Point it. is it has to go in cold. And that's because you want that butter to, to kind of exactly congeal. Yes. Yeah. And I mean, to be honest, something that my mom would tell me when I was growing up is like, if you want the booty, you got to eat the butter. So yeah. now, you know, you have to have a lot of butter to get the beautiful Madeline bump. Yep. Um, so uh, let's start in with the recipe. Uh, so you need to have your oven. I I said cook it at 350 because that's what it ends up. I start my oven at three at 400. And okay. then after I put them in, after a minute, I'm going to turn it down to 350. So if you have a 400 degree oven, do that. One thing we have to get going is our butter okay. because it needs to cool. Uh, and I already have butter cooled, but not melted. So turn on your, uh, your uh, pot that has the butter in it, or if mm -hmm. it does, it's not already in put um, the butter in a large pot, looks mm -hmm. great. Um, and we're I going have... to... Go ahead. Oh, so we're, go I'm just playing, I'm just playing with my burners here. I don't, there we go. <laughs> so I'm gonna uh, melt it over sort of a medium heat. And mm -hmm. once it uh, start, it melts, I'm gonna turn it up. Now, what we're going to make is a what I call a golden butter. So this mm -hmm. is something that's a little bit different in um, in other Madeleine recipes. Madeleine recipes always call for melted butter, by the way. Of course. Yeah. I'm making what's a golden butter. So a golden butter is somewhere between a melted butter and a brown butter. Got it. And the reason I love this golden butter is because it has a lot more flavor than yeah. a melted butter but it doesn't have the bird noisette color of a brown butter. Um, and, you know, I'm in the process of writing a new cookbook and like everything I taste is like, everything I make is like, mm, it's pretty good, but it would be better with golden butter. So I might <laughs> be calling the book golden butter, or Ooh. I'm also finding that with the size of everything I make, it has a tablespoon of vanilla extract in this case too. So it's like, it's either the golden 
the golden butter cookbook or the one tablespoon of vanilla extract. You know, it's like, how oh. much should it have? You know, I never understood how somebody puts in a half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. There's I mean, no it doesn't way. do anything. You have to be like chaos. So you have to just like pour it in. The more do vanilla, it. the better. Vanilla just do is, it. Do it. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> so my Chef, butter would you is like melting. to see my my butter? Is oh, that... it's golden. It's a beautiful color. So you Thank already have you. a cool. Well, for our viewing audience, I'll show you how to do that. Um, yeah. But mine's going, but I do have some in reserve as well. So mine's going. While that's going, I want to sift our flour. Okay. And I'm, I'm using pastry flour. Um, I'm using all purpose just because. And that'll the, work the, too. And in and, and most of my baking, I do all purpose. For the Madeleine, I do do a uh, pastry just for a mm -hmm. softer flour. Can you see what I'm using to sift my flour or no? Is that yes. on camera? So, so you okay, have, so I love this drum sieve. So but, I'm I mean, that's what a that's normal perfect. home baker would have at home. Yeah. And so just so that they could see the side by side, but if you are at home and you have the space for it, I would suggest getting what Chef Nancy has because that drum is really gonna make sure that all those clumps disappear. Yeah. And you don't want the clump, you don't want the clump. Well, I also am doing it to sift together my baking powder mm. uh, to make sure it gets distributed. But I wanna just do a quick little, uh, 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 quick little tip for everybody that when you're cooking, don't mm -hmm. forget to open all those senses. So open mm. up that smell. Nothing should ever burn in your oven because you would smell it cooking. Absolutely. Open up your eyes so you can see what's going on. But also importantly, keep those ears open because like I hear my butter bubbling in the back. So something's happening. There's activity. Yeah. I'm going to peek over and I'm doing fine. But really smell, look, obviously taste, but that taste. comes later on, but listen. So I am sifting my milk powder, my salt, my baking powder, and my flour together. I even recommend doing that twice only because, again, I want to distribute that baking powder I'm worried about. Now, when I'm making, say, a cookie, um, I have years ago gone um, kind of gone astray of that idea of sifting the salt, say the spices and certaining the leavening with the flour. Cause I never think that that gets mixed properly. I always add that when possible with my butter. So mm. I cream it into my butter and therefore I know that it's getting distributed correctly. So I have my, uh, my dries sifted and I did it on a piece of parchment paper. And the I reason I did it on a piece paper. of parchment paper is that I find it's easy to roll that up and create kind of a funnel or a spout to add that flour to my ingredients later on. And for the folks at so home I've watching that right now, to the side, say it again. Oh, for the folks at made, home watching? I made this. So I nice. made a little okay. parcel that I'm gonna be dumping my flour into. So this and was- Are you gonna sift it twice or are you just- I sift didn't it sift once? it twice only because I don't have another sheet of parchment paper, but oh. you could sift it into a bowl and then put it back into the sifter and then on top of that parchment paper. Now I can smell even more something happening to my butter. So I'm going to check on it. And now okay. my butter is all bubbly. Can you see that? Lots yes. of bubbles and I can oh, smell man. it now. I need to turn up my flame. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to gently swirl it. And that's why you need to have a deep pan so that I can swirl it. So it cooks evenly. What I'm doing is I am caramelizing my milk solids. And that's what's going to give my, my butter a lot of flavor. And it's gonna look like yours, which is a beautiful golden flavor. Did you taste it? Yes, it's, oh man. So it's halfway between umami and heaven. And- Yeah, that's a good place to be <laughs> in the baking world. Did you, do you use that golden butter? I mean, I use brown butter in a lot of baking things too, but it's only recently that I've 
use golden butter uh, a lot in melted when using melted butter when I don't want that brown butter. So I make this um, cheesecake semi frito, and I Ooh. use my stabilizer, which is golden butter. So when you said golden butter, I was like, oh, this is going to be good. This is going to be delicious. Because <laughs> a lot of people, they assume that all brown butters are equal. And that no, is not, they're not the case. It is, it is similar to how you have different types of wine. You know, that yeah. like, it makes a difference to the recipe. So much so. So I'm sifting my um, my flour a second time. I'm also, Great. for the folks at home, I am using a, a rubber spatula to help me kind of like push it through this uh, sieve or this uh, strainer because it is not as easy to kind of like strain it with this guy. So and if you guys my could butter, see, I have a little bit. Of I'm just gonna interrupt you really quickly. My butter mm -hmm. was all bubbly and the whole surface was covered with bubbles and foam. And then all of a sudden it starts to quiet down. And that's when you're almost at that golden stage is when it, mm. when it uh, sort of quiets down. And now I'm gonna pour it out so it can cool. So it's not brown, but it's golden. Mm. And, and all of those milk solids will float to the bottom. So it's not gonna be um, like this, like, usually with brown butter, you're almost like burning the milk solids. And this recipe is not that. So if you do see some kind of um, coloration or any type of like pieces of milk solids, colorful, maybe we would try our golden butter again at home. Correct, Chef? Yeah, and I'm gonna use, because they're caramelized and not burnt, I'm gonna use them because they're oh, delicious. Oh, delicious. Yes, I have um, some and they're just like floating like little heavenly morsels in my bowl. Right, but you do need to turn it out into another bowl to cool because it'll mm -hmm. start, it'll keep cooking. You, even if mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm, on the stove, mm -hmm. you will get brown butter if you leave it in the pan. So yep. into another bowl or into a pot of ice water or something. Okay, mm -hmm. so we've got that sifted. Let's go on with our eggs. Okay, so we okay. have five eggs. And I I'm have some. That, and one yolk. Okay, so I have mine cracked here and I have my yolk separately. So should I crack them directly um, into my bowl? Into a small or bowl. We're gonna need a, a big bowl. bowl. So unfortunately, and kind of the reason why I didn't, um, why I didn't uh, <laughs> sift my flour twice into another bowl is I thought somebody would turn off the video because they saw how many bowls I would be using, but because uh, I got <laughs> I got even more coming up, by the way. So um, I have a ton so, of bowls and it's OK. A little bowl right. never hurt, hurt anyone. Uh, so whisk your eggs. I'm going to show you my whisk. It's ginormous. Oh, it's that's the overkill. biggest whisk. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, once I guess when, when in uh, Paris, you know, you gotta go grand. So here we go. So I'm gonna mix, we'll mix, 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 mix. Okay, so mix your two sugars together. And if your brown sugar is a box that's been laying around for a long time in your cupboard, you may wanna have sifted that as well because some of those lumps can be pretty hard. Mine's, mm. mine's fresh. So I've got my egg yolks. Into my so, egg yolks, I'm gonna add. Now look at you went big with the whisk. I'm going super small with my <laughs> spatula, which I love because it take it's really easy to get the liquids out of these tiny ramekins. So I'm adding my vanilla bean paste to we're doing my the eggs. sugars right now, chef, right? Yeah, I mix the sugars and then I'm going back to my eggs and I'm just adding my honey and mm -hmm. my vanilla extract to my eggs. Your eggs, not the sugar. Yeah, I just added it to the eggs just because it was liquid. And now I'm okay. gonna add all that to my big bowl. So the reason why I cracked my eggs separately is that it's much easier to get any shell out in case we got that in into the small bowl without uh -huh. having to start over with the um, sugars. 
Okay, so I'm gonna put my vanilla in my eggs and then the honey as well, Chef? Yep, honey as well. Got my honey. Give that a little mixy mix. And then should I pour my um, flavored eggs into my sugar now? Yes, and whisk it up till it's combined. And then we wanna start adding our flour. I'm gonna start adding it with the whisk and I'll probably switch over to a spatula. So start adding your flour. Again, you should have a good big bowl like you have so the flour doesn't go all over the place. Okay. So I'm whisking slowly-ish, getting all that flour incorporated. I'll probably do this in five or six times. And like I said, if it gets too thick, I might switch over. You know, something else I do, hold on. This is also a nice... Thing to know when when you're um, when you are uh, folding in flour or adding flour in a bowl and it starts jumping around I oftentimes take that pot that I melted the butter in I don't mm -hmm. know if you can see and I anchor my bowl on top oh. of that pot which is a sort of a nice thing because it doesn't I don't have to chase it all over the kitchen I'm going to put a towel underneath my bowl because I okay, didn't. Okay, that's my another pot, great way. My pot is already washed and oh. sitting pretty. <laughs> and then at this point, I'm switching to a spatula because it'll make it easier for me to get it in because it's thickening up a little. And then I can also and scrape the sides down at the same time. And how far, so do, would you say maybe this is halfway um, of the flour being used, like half of the flour is used? Uh, by the time I switched over? Yes. From a whisk, uh, I would say more like three quarters of it. Okay. So I'll keep going, whiskey, whiskey. Um, you know, Julia also would have loved this recipe or this technique um, because it doesn't involve a mixer, a mixer, not to yeah. say she was anti mixer. I just think she just liked the old school way of doing things by hand. But also, I guess in France, there's not a lot of like expendable kitchen space, you know? No, exactly. Um, exactly. So. Yes, when I saw this recipe, I was like, oh, cool. I don't have to take out my mixer. Also, because she kind of makes a lot of noise. She's like, eh, 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 eh. and I'm yeah. like, okay, okay, superstar. <laughs> okay, so I okay, think now I'm, I'm gonna, at that point. Now I'm going to ask you to, <laughs> to grab another bowl. Uh, and this is something that's not imperative, but I find it very helpful. Um, Whenever I'm incorporating uh, two uh, mixtures together, uh, oh. and in this case, I'm going to be incorporating melted butter or golden butter with this egg and sugar mixture. What makes it easier for them to uh, come together, to like each other, is to make their consistencies similar. And to do oh. that, take a, a couple spoonfuls of your Madeleine mix and put it in a, yet another bowl. And then- For a couple of steps ahead of me, Chef. So oh, I'm sorry. going to- Oh, no, it's okay. I just I'll don't want to mess you. up. I don't want to mess up. I don't want to mess I'll up. I'll wait for you. Okay, thank you, Chef. Okay, I am- I'm going to show you before I go to the next step. What do you think? Is this good? Great. 
perfect. Okay. So I'm going okay, to- Okay, now pour some of that batter into the, a bowl. It could be any of the bowls you used, by the way, because it's all the same ingredients. So it doesn't have to be a clean bowl. Okay. And then pour your cooled butter into that mixture, the, the small bowl of the mm -hmm. egg and sugar mixture and mix that together so that what you're doing is you're thinning down that egg and sugar small quantity mixture with the butter, but you're also changing that texture or the consistency of that batter so it'll go in easier to the batter so it's almost like tempering. And you won't it. have to. So you're tempering it. Well said. And I'm scraping <laughs> out all my caramelized. God, that looks good. It smells. Okay. Heavenly. And then, then you're going to transfer it back in, and it'll and fold that back in, fold and stir it back in. But it's going to go in a lot easier. Okay. So I am still almost there. Let's see now. Boop, boop, boop. Maybe I didn't put too much, as, as much as you did on in your bowl. Mine has separated just slightly. Yeah, it'll separate it. Mine did too. Oh, okay. Fantastical. I'm ready for the next step. So the next step now is to stir it together. Okay. And even and you, though it's a little bit runny, it's a lot easier to do it that way. And it goes in much quicker than if you only had melted butter. However, if you only had melted butter and you didn't temper it, you would be able to mix it. It would just be a lot more difficult. It gets a little So kind of slosh it around, slosh it around. Slashy slosh, sloshing it around, sloshing it around, yes chef. Got it? Ooh, yeah. Mine is right. coming together so nicely. And, and it should it's look not... like a pot. Of, does it look like a pot of shoe? It looks like a pot of shoe. It's nice and shiny and mm. it's super smooth as well. But one thing I would note is that you would think that your arm would have a total arm workout and it doesn't. My arm is just having a whole vacation. It's just having <laughs> so much fun. Okay, how does this look? Chef? All right, that looks perfect. Okay, cool. now at this is the stage where you would either fill your, well, we'd have to prepare our pan, but if once our, mm -hmm. pair, our pan is prepared, you'd either put in a couple of tablespoons and put that whole pan in the refrigerator for an hour and a half. This or, pan. yeah, filled and then bake. Or do what I do is I just refrigerate all that batter for the next day. Okay. And that's what I have right here is, is yesterday's dough. Thick and so gonna, like that. I'm going to grab my, my piping bag from the fridge. Uh, Great. Excellent. Yeah. Well, let's, well, first we need to prepare our Madeleine pan. Okay. So there are, by the way, there are um, Madeleine pans that are non-stick as well, and you wouldn't have to do this, but um, I prefer this one. It even says made in France on it, the sticker. I kind of like that. I don't wash it off. <laughs> um, uh, did, you, did your recipe have that you're melting extra butter and then anything that's left over, you're going to use it to... Um, prepare your pan. So that's what I do when I have melted butter. You know, most recipes that don't have any melted butter, I say use nonstick spray, which you can, a nonstick non -stick spray. But if you're gonna be melting butter anyway, you may as well melt more so I, and use I that. I have a few drops of this melted butter here if you guys could see as well. So I'm actually gonna, cause sometimes uh, chefs at home don't have pastry brushes. So I'm gonna use my two fingers and I'm just gonna get in there and just spread it around. Yep. 
you know, all these things like pastry brushes, piping bags, those make life easier, but they yes. aren't there to deter you from making something. Absolutely. I um, have mine, but I would figured I'd show. <laughs> I am going to use a piping bag because I find it easier. Same, so let same. me um, let me show you how I oh forgot. Look at that's why you know when I bake or and when I cook, I like to always pull out all my mise en place. So that's my prepared ingredients or what goes in. And I'm like talking to you, looking at the lemons. I forgot the lemon. <laughs> I'll so, grab my batter. Yeah, so I'm going to use uh, a half a lemon because I don't like it too lemony. I just like a hint of lemon. So it's actually only a half of a lemon. And I'm using my favorite, one of my favorite tools. My, I think probably my favorite kitchen utensil next to a rolling pin is uh, a mortar and pestle. But I love microplanes and I have them oh, in all yeah. sorts of configurations and sizes. And they're great for cheese, grating garlic and grating the color part only off of citrus. So, so I have I have my citrus already pre-zested, but I too have oh, a good. microplane. But like you, I have a microplane for cheese. I have a microplane for nutmeg and cinnamon. I have a yep. microplane for citrus. And I just have an extra microplane, microplane because it's so cute. I think it's the best. I know, I love them. <laughs> I love microplanes. Um, you know, and I'm usually suspicious of recipes that say like a half a lemon. It's like, well, what am I going to do with the other half of the rind? I mean, I know I can use the juice for anything. Um, but in this case, I've tried it with a whole lemon and I find that lemon overwhelming. So I am mm. using restraint. Okay, let me show you how I fill a piping bag. And I think that this is important because especially with the batter that's so sticky, all you're going to do is get batter everywhere, on your hands, on your sleeve, on the counter, and it's just frustrating. It's really simple to grab some sort of a vessel, whatever it is. It could be a, a measuring cup, something that's tall. This is what we call a bain-marie or a deli, you know, whatever you want. Stick your bag in that, in that deli, the tip. I'm going to put a tip in, but you don't actually even need a tip in that pastry bag. And these are disposable bags. You can buy them probably anywhere now. I am going to put that tip in. Um, and you are using but, a round tip, Chef? I'm using a round three quarter inch tip and I'm putting it at the bottom. I'll be cutting off my pastry bag once it's filled. Mm -hmm. And Taking I saw that you twisted, I saw you twisted your tip to seal yeah, it. Yeah, I twisted my tip mm -hmm. to seal it and I stuffed the bag into that tip so okay. that it doesn't drip down. Again, this batter is so stiff, it's not gonna happen. But if it's something that's runny, that really helps. Mm. So set that over. Again, my batter is super stiff. Ow. And I guess they can see the difference between your batter and the batter that I have currently. You see how like loose it is? It, resting it overnight is really gonna make sure that that butter in this mixture sets up and gives you that lovely lady lump, you know, or Mr. Lump, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you know, and also uh, having, being able to set your bag here gives you two free hands rather than holding it and trying to control it that way. Absolutely. Okay, so fill up your bag. Actually, I'm gonna fill up mine a little bit more. So beautiful, your batter. I'm gonna snip off the top of this. I'm snipping off the top of my bag, so my tip. Like I said, you don't even need a tip. You can just use this bag without a tip and just snip it off. And now we wanna fill our molds and it's just a couple tablespoons. If you overfill them, 
what happens is the batter goes onto the top of the pan and you don't, you lose that shell shape. So would you say it's like a, an inch and a half of filling maybe? Well, it's, it's a little bit more than that. It's about two tablespoons. Um, uh, when we say an inch and a half, it's because, you know, my Madeleine mold is larger than an inch and a half, I think, but I'm, I'm half to three quarters filling that mold. And ah. then after you fill the first round, just put your bag tip side up back into your, back into your, um, uh, conical container. And now I'm going to put these in the oven. Now I'm going to, I'm going to put these in and I'm going to, uh, turn, uh, let it cook for about a minute. And then I'm going to turn my oven down to 350. And So I'm going to walk off screen and I'm also going to put my um, Madeleines into the oven. So, but my journey is much longer than Chef Nancy. So I'll be right back. And if you have the option at your home uh, to use a confection, definitely use your confection on your oven. It uh, helps to bring the Madeleine up. I got to make sure mine is on. I had a bit of a, oopsies, my oven was turned off by um, my very, very wonderful um, kitchen staff. <laughs> so I'm going to wait until my oven preheats a bit, but maybe I won't be able to make these on. It's okay, thank you, Anna. It's okay, thank you. <laughs> If my oven was right here, I'd be like, da-da. So funny, every time I turn my oven on for confection, all right, it's on confection, there we go. Uh, I'm going to wait till Paula gets back. Hi, here. I am trying to turn on my oven in the back, but it's not on. It was preheated, but I think um, Erica, uh, who does prep here, thought <laughs> I was done, that I was done. So she wanted to be efficient and save energy. So, Well, let's talk about Madeleine while these are in. Let me watch. Okay. Yeah, mine's on. Okay, so. What makes, me. what makes a Madeleine Julia Child worthy? Well, beautiful golden color, beautiful hump in the middle, right? And then let's slice it open. And right at that hump. First of all, it should smell delicious and, and buttery and vanilla-y. But I think most important, uh, it shouldn't be like a sponge cake. There should be a little bit of density to it, but it shouldn't be heavy. It shouldn't be dry. And it should bring that back those memories uh, as it did for Marcel Proust, right? Yeah. Oh, yummy. I'm gonna eat my bad oh, batch. Try a bad batch. Um, here we go. So mm -hmm. I had made my batter um, same day, and I was mm -hmm. asking Chef Nancy whether or not um, I could, you know, not wait because I, I was a little impatient. But um, it didn't work. It didn't work. So right, that's. But taste it. I'm sure the, all the flavor is going to be there. 
you just are not going to have the humps. Mm. A hint of honey, a hint mm -hmm. of uh, uh, lemon, definitely vanilla, and mm -hmm. definitely golden butter, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I wish I was there. I want to eat. <laughs> I want to eat. I'm so hungry. It's lunchtime here. And I'm just like, I, yeah, it must smell lovely where you, you both are. It, um, it's wonderful. So I'm going to come back. Cause I have some questions. Okay. That was so much fun. I just, you both, both of you bringing your expertise to this recipe was just so much fun to watch. Um, and did we inspire you to bake? Oh, it definitely. And I think the first thing is the Madeline pan, like, I guess, you know, a lot of us want to know what is the, you know, what is the best one? we see that, you know, Nancy has a different one. Paola has a different one. There are silicone ones out there. Like, what do you both recommend? Personally? You know, yeah, go ahead. I, you know, I, I really, I wish that I loved the, the silicone ones, but I don't. I think the metal, you know, on power, I am with you. And I, does it have to do with the way it feels like it doesn't feel like food. It doesn't no. feel like anything delicious will come out of that. And that's the thing, like with this metal pan, I feel yeah. like it is getting all every nook and cranny of that batter. And like even my batch that didn't rest in time has all of this delicious texture Oh my gosh, I'm just, I'm trying not to eat it because I don't want to eat in camera and like crunch, 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 but it is so tasty when it is made in a metal pan for some reason. Does it give and that, that crust? Is it the crust or does it give a crust of some sort? I don't I know. Think so. Chef Nancy, it does what do you give, think? I, I mean, it does give it a crustiness. You know, I haven't worked enough with silicone because I don't make anything in them, you know? I mean, so I'm ne I don't really know, and I don't want to put a bad name on it because it might be great, but I can't imagine it gets the color or the crust because it can't conduct that way. But I also feel that it doesn't leave a patina or it doesn't leave a history. Like every time I pull out a pan of mine, I'm like, oh, I remember when I burnt that pan. That was when, you know, <laughs> something that's so... Um, sterile about baking that way yeah right or i don't yeah. know it just i gotta switch my pan around here so, so I, I have another oh go ahead go ahead oh yeah i i agree with chef nancy i'm while i'm very uh new school and certain things old school <laughs> like pastry i went to the cordon bleu i I'm me too by the by way Julia. oh the cordon bleu alums in the house i'm a graduate of the london cordon bleu Oh, amazing. I was here in the States when, uh, back in 2009, I graduated. So I wish I would have went to uh, Paris to study, but my mom is very old school Caribbean. And she was like, you're not leaving this house until you have a college degree. <laughs> so, but I also agree. It's funny. Am I, this I was just going to say, when I told my parents that I was dropping out of uh, college in my senior year because I wanted to bake, my dad said, the only way you can do it is if you go to the Cordon Bleu. I didn't even know what the Cordon Bleu was. <laughs> and All here right. we, are. we have more questions. Um, so I guess we'll let's talk about golden butter because that there's a lot of questions about the golden butter. So would you recommend that for every recipe that calls for melted butter or is it something distinct? Like what... When let me we, let me get back to you on that because my nose tells me my madeleine are done so i need to get nose, them out of the Nancy. oven but i also want to say that this is something that julia childs insisted on and i'll tell you in a second um is that she she didn't like things to be staged or fake so for instance she wouldn't have accepted, like, let me just bring my own madeleines that I make in my restaurant and I know my oven, my, my commercial oven. And so, cause I don't trust my oven at home or whatever, she wouldn't accept that. So just to show you that these madeleine came out just as beautiful in my oven and you saw wow, with the big humps. Amazing. There's the bump need, people, the bump. You don't need a restaurant size or a restaurant a grade oven to get things right there it is it worked right there's my hump um anyway back to golden butter this is important to um think about when you're going to 
um, leave your melted butter and go to either golden butter or brown butter. You're going to lose a certain amount of, uh, of water. It, it's going to evaporate because we know there's water in butter and moisture. You're going to, you know. So always, if something calls for, say, four ounces of butter, make more golden butter, a little bit more, or more brown butter, and then weigh it after it's made. That's important. Don't mm -hmm. start with four ounces and then golden your butter or brown your butter and then use it because you won't have the right amount. That's one thing. The other thing that's important is if you want to use it because you want to cream it in something, then you can chill it or freeze it. I do that for scones, for instance. Brown, golden butter scones are absolutely delicious. I freeze my butter. Um, I do use a food processor to, um, to uh, cut my butter or whatever fat mm -hmm. it is into my flour, my dry ingredients when I make a scone cut that frozen butter in. Other times you can just use that golden butter, and I have for a number of recipes, add my sugars, use a paddle to mix it. At first, it just looks like you're making wet sand. And all of a sudden it transforms, it starts to lighten, it starts to cream. But to answer your question, sure, you can use golden butter anytime you want. Sometimes it doesn't make a difference and you don't taste it. So my feeling is then don't go to the trouble. But other times it really makes a difference, like in these Madeleine, like in a Blondie, like in um, like in a, a chocolate chip uh, cookie or in a chocolate chip cookie. When it makes a difference and you can taste it, go ahead and do it. But just remember, melt more, weigh it back to what the original uh, proportion Thank was. Thank you for both of your great answers. Um, so. Melissa wants to know, um, <laughs> we have questions about the bump. So what's making the bump? Is it the batter temperature, the flour, the leavener amount? Paula, you wanna go? Oh, um, it's the butter. That's the magic. That makes that, the bump. That makes the bump, but it's not just the butter. It's how Chef Nancy had one, the ratios of the sugar in this recipe are, you could put a leavener, but baking soda, only does so much, right? Uh, baking soda would make something rise in its totality. But the bump, you know, it's as if you were a flower in the ground, right? And when you bloom up, you know, you could put leavener and you could put fertilizer and in, in, into your soil and there could be a lot of nice action going on in your soil. But to be the flower, to be the madeleine, you have to make sure that you treat this as gently as possible but also give it time that resting period is what relaxes the gluten but also gives the butter the kind of gumption to do what it needs to do in that specific little bump area because if you look at your pan this guy is a little lower so he catches just a little bit more batter than the rest of the madeleine mold which creates this long, beautiful flowing process. Wow. Well, well said. Well, wow. Paula, you really, thank you. Um, all right. And then another question about vanillas. You have a favorite vanilla that you're using for this. I know you both like to put a lot of vanilla. Um, is there an, like an extract or a paste that you recommend? Make you your know, own I if use you can. What? Make, make your, your own, own if you can. Oh, wow. There you go. Make your, let's hear how you make your own. So it takes a year and you have to have it. <laughs> I'm 66. I don't have a year, but go on. Oh. <laughs> well, I just turned 30. So I have. Okay. Uh, you've got two years. I got two years. <laughs> I got two years to uh, make a two year but, vanilla. <laughs> oh my goodness. It, I, I might as well just buy a barrel too and just put it in there too, so that it gets that wood flavor. But you get your, if you're going to make this at home, you can make it as little as um, a month or a year. A year is the best process. I believe in, you know, trying to use, uh, thank you so much. Happy related to me. <laughs> um, ha you, you would use your vanilla beans, right, in a recipe, and you would save all of these pods, right, 
um, and you would buy some very good quality bourbon or rum. I'm from the Caribbean, so I would prefer rum. And then you would let this sit and something that similar to if you were making um, an infused oil or infusing another type of spirit and you would just let it sit in your cupboard in a nice cool dark place. Uh, you could try vodka as well. Um, but I would suggest something with a lot of uh, caramel notes. Um, a question was asked, can you use vodka? Um, and to be honest, to have this kind of like infused vanilla, um, if done correctly, you can add it to your spirits, you can add it to your cocktails, if we have any mixologists in the house. But to go back to Chef Nancy's point, I think that there's a plethora of store-bought vanillas that do justice to where they are farmed sustainably. Um, if you do not find something that is true to your values, you can go to, I don't know, a large wholesale chain and find it there as well. Thank you. Thank you, Paula. So I think, I think that's about time. I think I have one more question for each of you. And, you know, um, this is from Felicia Gonzalez. She asked, <laughs> if Julia was around, what was one thing you would bake for her now? Madeleine. <laughs> so Nancy would make this Madeleine with the golden butter. And then Paula, yeah. what would you make for Julia? Oh, man. I don't, I would be too nervous. <laughs> I'm so shy. I would just kind of like melt the minute that she would tap me. I would just be like, goodbye, everyone. Yeah, <laughs> <It's not laughs> um, yeah that but tap. I, but I think for me, um, in kind of like my love of New York City, um, I would just show or present to her my um, New York style cheesecake semi frito. Ooh. I think Julia would like that. <laughs> that sounds amazing. Um, well, I want to thank you both. I mean, I feel like the whole audience, like they just loved watching you two together and we hope one fun. you can cook together on TV live and meet each other in person. Um, but um, thank you both for your time. I know you both are busy and, you know, taking over the, the world. Um, so uh, I, I just, yeah, I want to thank you both. This was an absolute pleasure. And thank you everyone for watching for more Julia Jubilee, please visit cherrybomb.com. We have a few more events left. It's almost over and it's making us really sad. Mm -hmm. And I want to really thank Crate and Barrel because they've been able to make all this free for everyone oh. and making this event possible. So thank you to Crate and Barrel and thank you to all for watching and thank you to you too. Um, thank you. Take good care. Thank you. And we'll see chef. you. Bye. I love you so much, Chef. Bye. Love you. See you in three weeks. Yes, I'll see you. I I'm going to call you. I'm coming to DC. Okay, I'll be waiting. Oh my gosh, please. Okay, I will please. Yes, I would love that. Bye bye everyone. <laughs>